<laughs> what a great report. Uh, Hazel is a remarkable woman. She's now 90. Yeah. She yeah, just had her birthday. What was it like to, uh, to interview her standing up? Well, you know, there you are. You're 89 years old, and it's like I said, that was quarter to seven in the morning. We were standing outside in her backyard, and uh, it just, you know, it, it occurred to, to me as I watched it back, I didn't even think that I would need to ask her to sit down. She has, she has more vibrancy and energy than any of the peers I know, and uh, she's just a, an amazing gal, and she really takes a little time every morning. She sits with a devotional book, her cup of tea, and she just lets God fill her. Mm. And so we talked during that interview about the election, because this was the first of, the, of her 12 elections where she was facing a challenge from a difficult councillor, Carolyn Parrish. And uh, it just dissipated. She was back in power. The councillor who was the difficult one didn't get reelected. And she's, I, I've spoken with her after, and she just like, yes, we're back, we're back in the game. We're firing on all, all pistons again in democracy for the city of Mississauga. So that report was last November, just before the just election. Just before the election. And, uh, and since then she turned 90, 90 on Valentine's 90. Day. What a, what a blessing. Yeah, she had 2,000 people at her 90th birthday party. Wow. Well, you seem to connect with a lot of people who are uh, making a difference and, and engaging in society in, uh, in as, as uh, you know, might be called civic engagement, uh, that term. And so where else are you seeing this kind of... Uh, engagement in, in the public square where faith meets on that cross section? Well, the biggest controversy that just uh, blew up in the House of Commons was a very much a faith story, and that was how should government aid be handed out? And it's a, I wrote about this at uh, cbc.ca, and it's a column on Odagate. It's the idea of what went wrong over a decision on should uh, $7 million be given to a faith-based back group called Kairos or not. And the issue really isn't was Kairos giving what the government needed to give. The issue is how are decisions being made at CETA? And you know, people who work on the ground as faith-based charities, as NGOs, they know best on how the poorest of the poor should be receiving our aid. So it was a great opportunity for the church to shine a spotlight in on government policy and say, how are we making these decisions? It's a new day on how we figure out how to be part of our civic engagement. But it goes back to what Hazel said, get our hands into our communities on whatever level it is. Well, what other uh, stories uh, recently that have you, or maybe you're working we, on coming well, up? We're, we're, we're uh, busy, busy in the edit suite on two big stories. I can tell you about Ethiopia, but we're just uh, finishing off Saskatoon. We're doing a great, uh, actually I should call, say Saskatchewan. It's called Saskatchewan Success. And uh, we had a great privilege to interview Premier Brad Wall and a number of faith-based people there as well. And uh, learned some interesting things about faith in Saskatchewan. Well, I... Uh, I heard, maybe you can say if it's true, that uh, Saskatoon was originally founded as the city of God. <laughs> what about that? Uh, it's true. It's absolutely true. In 1881, there was a Methodist pastor here in Toronto who woke up feeling he'd had a dream, a vision from God, that he was supposed to build a city of God. His name was John Lake. Uh, Mr. Lake starts to collect money, and in one year, he raised $4 million from wow. business people in the city of Toronto. That's a phenomenal amount now or in 1881. Right. In one year, a $4 million campaign. He took the train to the end of the line. At that time, it was Moose Jaw, got on a horse and wagon, and just headed north with his family. And he was going to build a temperance colony north, and he bumped into Chief Whitecap along the way, who's one of the founders of Saskatchewan. And um, you'll see this great statue and the mayor of Saskatoon today reminding us this was a city of faith. It was a city built for God. And the first sermon that Reverend Lake preached in, in what is now Saskatoon, it was on the banks of the Saskatoon River in the community area that's now called Nutana. It was, his first sermon was about, may this be a city that refreshes people of all kinds of of faiths, nationalities, may this be a city that refreshes people with the goodness of God. And I was so moved at this because we were invited to come to Saskatoon by business people there who said, you need to come do a show here on how God is blessing Saskatchewan. So is the vision from way back then, uh, well, how's it doing now? Well, I think it's actually very integrated in Saskatchewan. Mm. 
You know, Saskatchewan has switched from being a have-not province where they used to get equalization payments to now it is paying for the rest of Canada. It's an abundantly wealthy province. It's paying the third highest wages as 7,400 jobs open on its saskatchewanjobs.ca website. It's booming, but what's also booming is the interaction of faith-based values. This idea that you work hard, that you care for each other, neighborliness. Um, and something that I saw there that we've never seen, I haven't seen anywhere else, the ministerial in Saskatoon got on a bus, rented a city bus, and drove around and prayed for businesses. They do this every year. Last year they, pr they prayed for Aboriginal ministries. This year they they prayed for businesses, they've prayed for schools, and I just, I, there was a city care there, and, and all through Saskatchewan, there's a great appreciation for the fact that there's gotta be a firm foundation, and that can come from our connection to our relationship mm. with Christ. Wow. Now, that's not to say it's a panacea. Mm. Um, it has the largest Aboriginal population in Canada. And it's interesting that the founding came through, you know, both the First Nations community and white settlers. And now we interview the head of all the Indian nations there, and he says, we're falling behind. And we hear a dialogue on um, how the Aboriginal community there is hoping for a better relationship with civic builders and with this educational process so they can march hand in hand towards success. Well, Lorna, we're almost out of time, but maybe just quickly touch on, uh, I know one of the stories you're following is the, the ruling awaiting um, yes. on Canada's prostitution law. Yes, it's going to be a, a watershed ruling whether Canada decides to legalize prostitution in a broader way than already. There are parts of prostitution which are practiced in Canada. Um, but if we make this a nation that says we will no longer uh, prosecute living off the avails of prostitution or, or uh, um, the whole ability to have brothels, um, it is going to change the landscape radically for how we use the whole area of sex for sale. It's a, it's a business that requires people to be coerced to go into it. Nobody raises their daughters wanting them to be a prostitute. It's an unfortunate um, profession. It's not a profession. It's a victimization. Yeah. It's absolutely a victimization. But there's a great movement going in Canada to normalize it into a trade, into a profession. It's not a trade. There's no way it's a fair trade. So that ruling is coming shortly. And as a sign of hope to it, we were able to um, give a different perspective to this. And our, our team traveled uh, to uh, Ethiopia with Samaritan's Purse. And we've created a documentary for Samaritan's Purse to, to be launched on International Women's Day and they have a project there that has taken 320 girls out women out of prostitution we don't even have a program like that in Canada that has successfully brought women out of prostitution at that rate so we uh, we just wanted to learn from our sisters in Ethiopia what we could possibly apply here and I'll tell you it is the changing power of Jesus Christ in people's lives that sets them free well we're so glad you're doing what you're doing, Lorna, and Thank we you. appreciate your, your work. And where can people catch Listen Up TV? Uh, well, uh, Sunday mornings on Global at 11 a.m. and of course the great CTS network, Thursdays at 10, uh, Fridays at 1.30. But if you go to our website at listenuptv.com, you can find all of these, uh, you'll find teases for these programs that are coming up. You'll find my blog, you'll find our staff blog, you'll uh, learn lots of neat things that we're doing there. Join us on Facebook. Great stuff, Lorna. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you, Ron.